Hello everyone, and welcome to this overview of the Omniverse Painter plugin. Personally, I'm rather excited by this plugin because it allows us to use Adobe Substance 3D Painter in a way never before possible, all while introducing a minimum of additional complexity. It basically gives artists the ability to sync with Omniverse and have near real-time updates in a variety of top-notch renderers. And that is just simply fantastic. The fact that it pushes the content to USD, sets up basic scene work, and converts the textures and materials is just additional icing on the cake. Basically, if you are a Substance Painter user, getting your content into the Omniverse is as easy as clicking a button. Excited to see how this works? Okay, let's get started by doing a quick introductory walkthrough of the setup and usage and see just what this plugin can do. Okay, rather obviously, you will need a copy of Substance 3D Painter. It is the latest incarnation of the Substance Painter we all know and love. Before we can get started working, however, we need to be sure a few things are in place. If you are following along, be sure to quit any Omniverse apps you may be running, and also quit Substance Painter. Excellent. Now, let's launch Omniverse Launcher, and jump into the Exchange. Once there, search for and install the Painter plugin. Great. Now, Painter does not rely upon Nucleus. However, to follow along in this tutorial, you will want to be sure your Nucleus is set up and running. The easiest way to check that your Nucleus is running is to select the Nucleus tab here in the launcher. If you don't see the navigator loaded, you should be instructed to install. You will need it, so feel free to pause, get that installed, and continue when complete. Okay. So assuming that is all set up, let's go ahead and launch Painter and Omniverse Create. Please note that though I'll be using Omniverse Create to demonstrate in this tutorial, any Omniverse kit-based app will work similarly, provided you have the Painter plugin enabled. To enable the extension, simply navigate to the Extensions panel and search for the word Painter. Once found, enable it, and if you expect to be using this plugin a lot, choose Auto Load. Okay, once loaded, we can display the Omniverse Painter panel by selecting the window, then Omniverse Substance Painter panel, and confirm that everything was loaded up as expected. Let's dock that panel down here, as we will be referring to it later. Perfect. Now, let's jump over to Painter. Here, we also have an Omniverse Connect panel. It will be found in the JavaScript menu, and it will be called Omniverse Connector. If it is not already, go ahead and enable it. When you do, the Omniverse Connector panel will appear. Let's dock that somewhere in our Painter interface where it will be convenient. I'll choose down here, next to my Asset Browser. Perfect. Okay, now we need some content to work with. For this, I'm going to open up a model I've been working on for some time. They are my tried and true headphones that I wear every day. Now let's go ahead and review the texture set list. As we can see, there are a number of texture sets. I've got my aluminum cups, my black shiny bits, rubber, leather, and a few others. Each of these have their own textures that I've applied using a variety of painter methods, from fills to paint layers and more. So what we have is a typical mesh with a handful of materials, probably very similar to any mesh you yourself may paint. Now let's kick this over to create using the connector. To do that, let's take a closer look at our Omniverse connector panel here. In Painter. The first and most important thing to do is check the ports. Down here you can see that we can enter the port we want to use. It should be defaulted correctly, but to be sure, let's check our Omniverse Create Painter panel. Yep, 8111 is a match. We are good to go. If they were different, however, just make sure to set the Painter Live Link panel to whatever is listed in the Creates Painter panel. Once matching, everything is good to go and we're ready to rock. Now, back in Painter, let's set the export texture resolution to 2048 by 2048. Depending on your drive speed, you may wish to set this lower while working. But for me, with SSDs, 2048 gives decent performance while giving me good quality and create. In the end, we will push this up to 4096, but for now, 2048 for me is perfect. Feel free to tinker with the other settings, but the defaults are usually fine in most cases. 
Now, before we export, I do want to explain this export folder for just a second. This folder acts as a kind of temp place where documents get exported locally. These local files are used to expedite the process, but are not actually used outside the working process. With that said, if you have a number of drives to use, setting this to a fast drive like an SSD or an M2 SSD will be preferable, as drive speed here will be helpful with updates. Now, to control where our file actually does go, we will want to jump over to Create and set the Export folder in there. This directory selection dictates where the files are routed. In this case, let's go ahead and select a folder on the localhost nucleus. Then, let's make a new folder for the content to reside within. Excellent. Now, all we have to do is export and establish a connection. Let's jump back to Painter and click the Export Mesh to Omniverse button. In Create, we will get a warning letting us know an incoming connection was requested and that the files are being sent. You can leave or dismiss this warning. It makes no difference. Please be patient, however, and give it a moment to complete. This initial connection requires a bit of work to be done, as your mesh is being converted to USD, materials are being constructed, and all the files are being transferred to your nucleus. Okay, the files have been sent and the connection is established. As you can see, beyond the setup, sending is simply a matter of a single click. Now, in Create, I have a one-to-one -one with my painter file. Pretty nifty. Although one thing that kind of stinks is that we don't have a one-to-one -one environment. In fact, I have no lighting at all. Here in Painter, our scene is lit with lots of nice global lighting. But we don't have that here. Let's fix that. Simply select the Export Environment Map, and nearly instantly, you should notice your mesh is now lit in Create. Pretty cool. Now, if we select the Make Environment Map Visible and Export again, we will make the background visible as well. Even better. At this point, we might even want to see how this looks in path tracing. Let's switch the render mode and take a look. Wow. Really, just wow. This mesh has never looked so good. Now, with this nearly photographic representation, I'd love to be able to paint and see my results. I mean, for those super small but critical details, it would be amazing if I could just work and see my final render results quickly. Let's see if that's possible, shall we? Okay, I will now just start painting in my stitches and my details. Notice that I can review these stitches as I work and create. These are super important details and help really convince reality. I want them to be just perfect. So having a renderer this accurate is fantastic. Wow, I mean, look at this. Updates are super fast with full up path tracing. The quality is so real feeling, it's almost otherworldly. Okay, now I'll just tinker till I'm done. And good, that looks amazing. Now, let's push our high-res textures over and make it even a little better. To do this, we can simply change to 4096. This again is a fairly large process, so give it some time to kick over all those nice big textures. Okay, it's done. Now, to really get the most out of Omniverse and prove out a final use case, let's switch our renderer over to Ground Truth, which uses iRay to render. As this is a standard kind of ultimate quality renderer for many, we are getting final results right here in Omniverse with live updates directly from Painter. If this isn't cool, I'm really not sure what is. Okay, so that kind of shows the full process for using the Omniverse Painter plugin and hopefully shows you a good initial way to get started using it. The last thing I'd like to mention, however, is that though this demo showed the process from Painter to Omniverse, we can go from Omniverse to Painter and then back again. To do this, simply locate and open a file in Omniverse Create that you would like to paint. Then in Painter, select Import Mesh from Omniverse. Now you can just paint with the established connection and all your changes come through to create. At that point, it's the same process as the one we just reviewed. All right, that concludes this overview. I hope you found it informative, helpful, and gets you painting in Omniverse today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.